What's going on, friends? There's a Harley Davidson engine that came out here recently that's really kind of been scaled back a little bit, and we've seen it disappear from a lot of the models. We're talking about the Milwaukee 8 107. The 107 variant has really kind of gone the wayside in favor of the 114. But don't count that 107 out. That 107 can still produce some really good power with a few basic modifications. The 107 cubic inch displacement was an excellent place to start with the twin cam engine. That was always a really good target number to hit. Now, that's why I say it carries over very well into that Milwaukee 8. But the Milwaukee 8 version isn't going to take near as much to get really good power out of as you would have had to with the twin cam. Because on the twin cam, the two valve head really held it back. So you had to go a little further with some head work and probably a little bit of higher compression. Guys, before we get too far into the video today, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, when it comes to a Milwaukee 8107, really the only thing you need to do is swap out for the right cam. You get the right cam in there, and that engine's going to produce the horsepower and torque all day, every day, that you could have got out of a hopped-up twin cam that's been punched out to a 107. Now, a great benefit to the 107 is that, generally, they are quite a bit cheaper than the 114 powered variants. And not to mention, yes, the 107 does have a little bit smaller bore and a little bit shorter stroke, but I kind of like that little bit shorter stroke. Think back to the 88s with the four inch stroke and you converted those to a 95 inch. Those bikes were really hard running motorcycles and the same really is true for a 107 with a few minor modifications. Now really honestly, depending on what kind of riding you do, but if you want that engine to spin up faster, get up into those good RPM ranges where you're really producing the horsepower and torque, that short stroke is going to allow you to get there just that much faster. Now, albeit with a little less bore and the shorter stroke, you're not going to have the displacement of the 114, obviously. And with that little bit of lack of displacement, you're not really giving up horsepower so much as you are a little bit of torque. And it could honestly be about a 10 foot pound difference, but... The butt dyno don't care. A 107 with a little hot rod work done to it, you're not going to notice the difference and you really ain't going to worry about it. Now the 107 has a 4.375 inch stroke and as I mentioned the bore just a shade smaller than the 114. The bore is going to come in at 3.937 inches. Now on the 114 this is really easy. We got a 4.5 inch stroke and a 4 inch cylinder bore. Now, that little bit of extra displacement on paper makes a really big difference. But, as I mentioned, the butt dyno doesn't care, and the butt dyno is just purely subjective. And, honestly, that's what we're really after. Numbers on the dyno really don't mean crap out on the street. Now, if you guys remember, when the Milwaukee 8 first kind of got rolling, 2017, 2018, when it got into the soft tail line, they offered a 107 and 114 inch variant, in a lot of different models, the Fat Bob being one of them. You had options there, even with the Fat Boy. Now, what's kind of happened is leadership has changed. They pretty much dropped the 107 out of everything. 107 was in the lowrider, they dropped the lowrider. The Street Bob now only has a 114. Pretty much all the soft tails have a 114 now. Unless you're going to get into the Heritage Classic, you can get that with a 107. The Electroglide uh, Standard. That has a 107. You can get the standard electric glide, not electric glide, street glide and road glide with a 107. Now, make no mistake, there is a very big price gap between a 107 powered Harley Davidson Milwaukee 8, like a Road King or the basic street glide or road glide, versus their counterparts in the specials. That's where the price really jumps. I mean, we're talking what? We're looking at 23, 24? That's five or $6,000 difference right there. The reason why I really like the Milwaukee 8107 is it seems like nobody wants it. Everybody wants that 114. So I love that fact because that makes the 107 powered bikes generally sell for a little less money. And with that savings right there, that leaves a lot of room for upgrades to that 107. So if you're going to put a cam in a Milwaukee 8, you might as well go ahead and do the cam plate and the oil pump. You already got it down. It's all right there. It just makes sense. And if you guys know from any of my previous videos about the Milwaukee 8, 
they have had some oiling issues, and especially with something, but generally a good oil pump in there, crankcase ventilation, they tend to do pretty well, and it's really not an issue from that point on. So what can a Milwaukee 8 107 do with just a bolt-in cam? Well, for that, I want to go to one of the biggest crowd favorites and probably one of the best-selling Milwaukee 8 cams out there right now, and for good reason, and that is the Wood WM8 22XE. This is about the absolute pinnacle of meanness and nasty performance that you can find in a bolt-in cam for a Milwaukee 8. With a stage one exhaust, air cleaner, and tune, the 107's making about 74 horsepower and 95 foot-pounds of torque, which isn't bad at all, but with the Wood WM8 22XE, that same bike is now making 111 horsepower and 117 foot-pounds of torque. That is very usable power that you saved a lot of money on by getting the 107 that nobody else wants. And with that money saved, that'll pay for that cam chest upgrades with that new cam. And, well, for the labor, if you're paying somebody to do it, labor's high, you're on your own. Now, let's say you just happen to have to have the 114. Let's look at a 114, same exhaust setup, pretty much basically mirrored setup of the 107 with the cam and everything else. Now, with the 114, we're looking at 75 horsepower and 103 foot-pounds of torque. Not surprising at all with the added displacement. But as I mentioned, same exhaust, same cam, just in a 114 engine, we get roughly 114 horsepower, which is only about three to four horsepower more than the 107s are generally getting. Now with the added displacement, the 114 is going to gap the 107 as far as torque. We're looking at 126 foot-pounds of torque, and that's about nine to 10 more foot-pounds over that 107. So guys, the numbers are very close. The horsepower numbers weren't super far off, which that's pretty normal, that's not surprising. But when it comes to the torque numbers, yeah, we got a pretty decent gap there because a little longer stroke, a little bigger bore, more displacement means more torque. So, but guys, 111 horsepower and 116 foot-pounds of torque out of a 107, that is very streetable power. Are you really going to notice a difference on the butt dyno between that 107 at 114? Maybe, but that's very subjective. But when you look at the price difference between a 114 and a 107, you look at the, what you can actually save, whether you're buying new or used, if you're really wanting to get something that's going to have some power and performance in it, but you don't want to break the bank, 107 is really the way to go. Especially used, even the used ones, they're going to sell for a little less than the 114 because nobody really wants that 107. They all got their eye on that 114. So guys, if you're in the market for a Milwaukee 8, don't overlook that 107. I see a lot of people are like, oh, hey man, I found this fat bob. It's only the 107 though. I want the 114. Well, you know, for what that 107 fat bob's selling for, that's a lot less than what a 114 is. And with that price difference right there, you can put the cam in it, the cam plate, the oil pump, and still be under what that 114 is going to run you. And you're going to blow away that 114, even with exhaust and everything else. Because as we all know, most people don't get past the stage one. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But guys, until next week, you guys stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.